welcome all to this uh, exciting lecture um, and welcome to Shanji and uh, all his followers. So, I am going to invite uh, Rishika Shah to give a brief introduction to Nishanji. Uh, Rishika is a chartered accountant and she is doing a PhD and she has more than 10 years of experience and um, uh, it will be a pleasure to hear you again. Rishika, here you are. Uh, good evening everyone. My name is Rishika and uh, today I have the absolute honor and pleasure to introduce all of you to Professor Ishan Shivanand. Uh, to talk of his achievements and to introduce him is humbling to say the least. And of all his achievements, most of which I can't even remember without reading from a piece of paper, uh, the kind of impact that he's had on health of people that he's worked with is tremendous. It's large and it's widespread. And today he's here to talk to us about what he thinks of the impact that the kind of education system that we are in is having on us as individuals. Uh, he is the visiting faculty of Integrative Yoga Therapy at Sri Jayadeva Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences and Research in Bangalore. He's also the head of department of yoga at University of Silicon Andhra, California. He's a faculty of students welfare at the Neotech Institute of Technology, Vadodhra. Advisory on Students Welfare for Rungta Universities in Chhattisgarh and Director of Mental Health Initiatives at the Wheels Global Foundation, Virginia, USA, amongst many, many more. So I would like each one of us again if we could put a huge round of applause to welcome <laughs> Professor Shanshu. Respected all, good it's a pleasure to be here in Mumbai, IIT. All of you. Ache ho, bariya ho. Hindi mein baat karlo thodi si. Bariya. So, uh, in this conversation, I won't bore you with a lot of technical jargons. Your IIT, I'm sure you have enough of those. So, what I'll be doing here is I'll be using metaphors to convey my messages. But my main objective would be to share with you a few modalities that you can use that can help you in your resilience. Can I do that? I have one hour with you. So let's try to make the most of it. So before I begin, let me tell you a story. Uh, when I was 21, I had to get married, arranged. And uh, it was interesting. I never got a chance to date. Yeah. My father came and said, You see that girl? Yeah. That's your wife. <laughs> so you know why I'm in mental health. <laughs> yeah. Laughing at someone's misery. That's cool. Anyways, when I got married, before that I had studied zoology, botany and I had heard if you introduce an alien species into an ecology, it can have devastating effects on the local flora and fauna. The alien species was my wife, the local flora and fauna was my mum. I got married in July. Then came Valentine's Day. My mind is forgetting when that dreaded day is. When is it? February. When, madam? See, PTSD. Fourteenth <laughs> Feb, the day came, and I was enamored by my wife. She was probably the first girl who held my hand. Look at my face. I look like somebody who will go boom. When I go to the US, they check me so much, I never need a massage. <laughs> so yeah, I got her 12 flowers, roses, uh, nicely 
cut you know, bouquet, big ones. And I gave it to her. She was very happy. And you know who wasn't happy? My mom. She said, पिछले 20 साल से तेरी चड्डी मैं धो रही हूँ तेरा खाना मैं बना रही हूँ करम जले कल मोहे ये अभी आई छ महीना पहले और इसको फूल दिए तूने सो आई वेंट मेंटल हेल्थ है मैडम थोड़ी नोटंकी तो चलती है क्या सीरियस लेक्चर दू क्या हाँ जी सो फिर आई सेड आई स्टार्ट विद मेडा फॉर आदर देन गोइंग ऑल साइकेट्रिक ऑन योर हेड या वे बोझा है कल मोहे कर्म जल सो माय मिस्टेक सो आई वेंट एंड आई गॉट अ बंच ऑफ रोजेस फॉर माय मम यू नो गेट आउट ऑफ दैट फिक्स फास्ट But the mistake I did was, I got a thirteen roses. So now my wife got extremely sad. कि अपनी माँ को तेरा दी, मुझे बारा. And now I am in a state of stress. I am in a state of anxiety. I don't know what to do. My mind can't cope. So in a way, you can say stress is uh, when the external changes are happening faster than you have the ability to cope. Yeah, sort of. It's like you have a glass, you fill it with cold water, then you drain it and you fill it with hot water. What's going to happen? The glass will break. Yeah. Now imagine if the external changes are so fast that the molecules can't deal with them. So of course they are going to break. The same can be said with our mind. Again and again we are doing research, we are having the data. And why after COVID, the stress, anxiety, depression it is increasing is because the society is being unpredictable. Changes are happening too fast. And many times our mind is not able to cope with it. So when we talk about coping, we have various forms of coping. There are coping mechanisms like uh, Jack Daniel, or I don't know IIT में क्या चलता है मेरे को students हैं sorry नहीं चलता but generally पूरी दुनिया में अलग अलग coping mechanisms हैं Netflix खाना पर्सनली कोविड में मैंने तो जोमैटो बहुत चलाया कोपिंग मैकेनिज्म थोड़ा सा निकल गया बाहर मैं भी तीन महीना प्रेग्नेंट दिखता हूँ देर आर कोपिंग मैकेनिज्म्स वेरियस वांस बट व्हाट माय फील्ड ऑफ स्टडी वाज I wanted to understand the coping mechanisms that lie in native medicine, especially the ones that correlate to resilience. Because if we have a cup, a glass that we talked about, you know, change the temperature and it breaks, but what if our glass was a chemistry level? What's that, Dr. Kanan? You are specialized in chemistry. What's that? thing that doesn't break if you put it on a Bunsen burner. Beaker ko kya kehte? Ethi. Something, something. You know that industrial level glass. So what if somehow we can have some form of modalities, resilience training that can help us become stronger. Because there are a lot of external factors that we cannot talk about. We cannot change, we cannot put an effort on them, we can't control a lot of behavior that is around us. So at that time we have to focus upon resilience. Now my field of speciality is resilience training through meditative modalities. 
Now the thing about meditative modalities for mental health, to be honest, they are one of the most exploited and least regulated fields. Because when we talk about meditative modalities, and it happened, I was working in uh, Jaydeva Cardiovascular Research Institute, and many times the doctor, when he sees a patient is suffering from chronic stress, the doctor would go to the patient and say, reduce your stress. And the patient would be like, how? You know, like when I got married, my father said, make your wife happy. Give me an SOP. If I don't have an SOP, how will I manage? So the whole point, even with the cardiology research institution was that you tell somebody, okay, go do meditation, go do this, go do that. But then what's the modality? What's the intervention? Has that intervention been designed? Has that intervention been researched? Has that intervention ever been deployed? in a clinical setting and then implemented at places where it is most necessary. So I dedicated the last six years of my life where I spent time first with the government of Mauritius, Africa in trying to design those SAPs based on the native medicine modalities and the whole point was to try to make them non-theological, non-pharmaceutical some things that everybody can understand and benefit from. Now why I really liked working in Africa was because in Mauritius specifically, I had a plethora of people and that really helped me overcome uh, bias when it comes to a clinical setting. Because generally when I was in India, I was working with our people, you know, same, same. But when you have a plethora of people sitting in front of you, then you really have to design the SOP well. You really have to assume that the person may not know what you're talking about. So we designed, we worked with the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Then in 2019, I got an opportunity to go to the United States to research on the same modalities. We partnered with University of Cincinnati, with the Mayo Clinic. We implemented our designs in MD Anderson and the whole study, the whole speciality was simple, resilience training, mental health through meditative modalities. And that is what I am here to share with you. I would like to share a few techniques, something that you can utilize because I don't just want to be here and give a very nice lecture or a boring one, I don't know, and then you just go. I believe in being a take home value. But before I begin, this is a very interesting uh, slide deck that we made and I believe this can be of value to you in which we discuss the economic impact of mental health. Now many times when we are working in India and we are trying to talk about mental health and not just in India even in Africa a lot of people don't think of mental health as something to talk about especially in the Indian diaspora and I've seen this personally a child can go to his father and say, I'm stressed. And the father will say, you don't have a right to be stressed. Because when I was young, I was suffering more than you. And then he'll give you a whole list of all the things he has been through. So it can be an issue. But when we made our economic models, we worked with behavioral healthcare, healthcare economists, we realized that we don't realize how important mental health is, especially when we are talking about poverty cycles. And here you can see, it's a chicken and egg conundrum. There is mental health issue that can lead to burnout, can lead to stress, it can lead to substance abuse disorders, it can lead to a plethora of behavioral disorders that will affect somebody's economic status and the cycle keeps on going on and on till the time an intervention is provided for mental health. Now, uh, 
this is a very sad statistic. This is taken from uh, the Lancet report of 2020, the National Crime Records Bureau report, and Indian Mental Health Observatory. This shows that uh, when we are talking about interventions, so I just showed you this cycle that can be created as a effect of mental health on somebody's economic status or just simple lifestyle. Now when we are talking about interventions, there can be two interventions that can be provided to a person that may be suffering from mental health issues. The first intervention is a pharmaceutical intervention. A pharmaceutical intervention is when we have trained uh, specialists and they are giving some form of pharmaceutical intervention. But when we are looking at our country and we look at the budget of what we spend on mental health, whereas compared to the rest of the world where the health budget 5 to 18 percent goes on uh, mental health issues in India, we are only spending 0.8 percent of our total health budget on mental health. And if we are talking about trained professionals, the last survey that was done, we have 100,000 people and we have one person for 100,000 people. And that becomes an issue, especially when I work with Indian universities and I was in one of the universities, I can't name that because of reasons. And in that I was talking to students and the students said that if we have issues, we are feeling stressed, you know, we are feeling implosive. That is how they try to put it. We have access to counselors, but the counselor can only come once a week and just to get an appointment with that counselor can take weeks. But at that time when the issue is there, we don't have an intervention. And that is when we have our coping mechanisms and coping mechanisms, as you know, can be numbing, can be healthy, can be unhealthy. There's a plethora of things. And, and the worst part is, a coping mechanism doesn't guarantee you will come out feeling better. It may delay the problem, but it will not guarantee a solution. So this is what you can see. We made a whole economic model. Uh, these are the suicide rates that India is suffering from right now. And one of the most interesting statistics that we saw from the World Health Organization was that out of the 100 global suicides in 2020, 39. India contributed and the crazy part is that it is the urban data we don't have rural data and uh, it gets somber if you think about it so these are just the economic models I don't want to go in this I want to talk about this that one is the pharmaceutical interventions. Pharmaceutical interventions requires cost. It requires a budget. It requires trained professionals. But then the question comes, countries that are spending that amount on mental health, are they succeeding? If we look at countries like United States that spend so much money, 5 to 10, 18 percent of their health budget on mental health then we look that the mental health of United States is so nice it is so good nobody takes a gun and shoots people there stress doesn't happen to students at all there is no anxiety in stem workers I'm being sarcastic just so you know so if we are looking at that model, we are seeing that already there are kings in this model that we need to chalk out. Kings, what kings? What would you say? Was the word? Change, change. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought I picked up a wrong word. My mistake. So what this means is, we need to find or explore non-pharmaceutical models as well. Non-pharmaceutical models that can be integrated to the pharmaceutical models. Because if we only rely on the pharmaceutical models 
of behavioral health care and mental health, then a problem can happen and that problem is the system can be overwhelmed and there can be a critical system failure. Something that we saw during COVID. When there is a big problem and our system cannot manage the problem, there is going to be a system collapse. Something that the United States is experiencing right now, where a lot of integrative modalities are not available. So what happens is we have moderate symptoms of mental health, we have severe symptoms, then we have symptoms that we can solve by bringing simple behavioral modifications. So yes, there are some very severe cases that do require institutionalized health, that do require pharmaceutical health, but there are so many symptoms that can just be helped if the correct, well-designed, well-researched behavioral lifestyle prevention modality is provided. Now what this does is, what a good non-pharmaceutical modality does is, number one, it takes undue pressure away from system. The system can focus on patients that need critical care. And number two, it makes mental health accessible. So our whole objective was when we were designing the interventions, because once we had the interventions, then our idea was that they should be provided either low cost to no cost. And maybe it was because it was COVID, we relied heavily on software solutions. And what software solutions did was, it helped us overcome one of the biggest problem in mental health. You know what that is? Stigma. What? You know, you, you don't know who to talk to. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to say, what you're allowed to say, how you'll be judged. And we didn't know at that time because COVID made us find software solution, it helped solve so many problems because number one, low cost to no cost. Number two, it helped overcome stigma, especially with students. Because now a student, whenever he felt, you know, that, that pressure cooker, that, you know, the, at that time, they had access to those interventions and we did a massive study with 11,000 participants. The 70% of the age group of that was from 18 to 35 and we realized that they kept on coming back to the interventions periodically and they kept on taking help from those interventions. Now the crazy part was when we designed the SOP, we got the IRB, we started our studies and it ran for nine months. The crazy part was the data. We wanted to study four basic parameters when it came to mental health and these are subjective parameters. But I think these parameters are extremely relevant. We used the standardized testing for this. The parameters were anxiety, depression, insomnia, and quality of life. Anxiety because students, do you have anxiety? Yes, no. Anxiety means fear of unknown. Anxiety can be trying to cope with the changes that are happening around us. Anxiety can be the examinations that are looming above your head. Anxiety can be going back home with a bad report card or something. Do you have report cards? Yeah, see, Ugh, ugh. I'm getting anxiety just thinking about them. The many things. So we wanted to study anxiety because chronic anxiety can lead to a lot of physiological issues when time comes. And that is a big thing. Anxiety is a big thing. In Jayadeva Cardiac Research Institution, we are looking at data. We are having a plethora of heart attacks to people under the age group of 40. Aapne bhi suna hoga, Mumbai mein bhoot hota hai, gym gaye, gym karte karte, selfie lete lete mar liye. Koi baat hoti hai. And the worst part is that when we looked at their Objective parameter data, the lipid profile was fine, 
their cholesterol was fine. They were healthy people. And that showed that we have to look beyond, we have to look at the mental health aspect of cardiovascular health and other aspects of our life. We can't just say that, oh, we have anxiety, it's all right, you know, it's part of student life. Let's live with it. Sooner or later, it brings a toll. The second parameter that we were working upon is depression. And the depression that we studied was not uh, the, it was moderate to severe. We wanted to study what happens, not that depression, that, oh my uh, show got over, I am depressed. Or oh my, uh, I don't know, what's a silly reason to be depressed? Give me one. That's not silly. <laughs> I can start a riot for that man. Okay. Ugh. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Having backlog in studies, I thought uh, coping up with them properly. Yeah, that, in the grand scheme of things, it's a silly reason. Yeah, sure. Very nice. So, we wanted to study moderate to severe reason, uh, reasons for depression. Moderate to severe can be losing a loved one, being diagnosed with an ailment, not being selected for Oh, my hand is paining. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know what happened? Yeah. You know, moderate to severe reasons. The third parameter we wanted to study was uh, insomnia. Now, insomnia is not a disorder. There are a plethora of reasons why insomnia can happen, but still we wanted to study. Because insomnia is something that students are suffering from a lot. And... Uh, it is one of the biggest reasons for substance abuse disorders because when we talked to people who are suffering from alcoholism, etc., etc., we found out that a lot of people with SADs are self medicating. They don't know how to relax. You know what the great Katrina Kaif once said? Just chill. <laughs> chill. Just chill. She really tried to hammer in the message. People don't know how to do that. So when the night comes, their mind is active. They are like Ullu. And it's a big issue. Because if you look at early onset dementia, we look at Alzheimer's, we look at a lot of brain related disorders. We look at cardiovascular health. And now so much of HRV data is coming. A lot of variables, the billion dollar industry is talking about sleep data. And it is seen that if we are not having good REM sleep, we are not having good deep sleep, it is going to have physiological impact. So we wanted to study how non-pharma can help with our sleep patterns. And the fourth thing was the SF12, the quality of life. And quality of life was very, very interesting because at that time COVID was happening and in United States, where I was based at that time doing the research, quality of life wasn't good. Everybody was after toilet paper and I didn't know why because I was Indian. But <laughs> 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 Still, toilet paper. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir, for getting my head back there. So, quality of life was a big thing because that was the time when people were, uh, you know, realizing that they love their family, but they can't tolerate them. Everybody was stuck in their houses. Everybody was irritated with each other. So, technically, parameter-wise, quality of life was extremely down. But when the data came in of people who were given interventions, uh, the interventions that were provided, again, as I said, were meditative in nature. They had four parameters that were uh, in each of the intervention we looked upon. So the first was body awareness. So th this is now I'm talking about the actual SOP. So body awareness, then we looked at breath work. Then we looked at intention setting 
and number four we looked at emotion selective awareness of emotion now these four parameters are extremely important because I studied a lot of native medicine before we did the research and uh, we studied theologies different theologies that talk about meditation we studied the Indian native medicine and in Indian native medicine we studied uh, modalities like Jainism uh, Buddhism uh, Sanatan theology and we found out that if you do the fermentation combination if you break down the meditative modalities these are the four factors that everybody utilizes body consciousness where you can be like asanas or sitting straight or moving your consciousness through the body etc etc body awareness basically making a mind body connection number two breath work breath work was like this holy grail in all meditative modalities and we utilized the various techniques based on the native principles on how we would work on the breath work and I'll share a few modalities with you the third was intention how we can work with the intention what uh, in native principles we call dharana where we want to control our mind and there are various modalities for that there is selective awareness there is goal setting etc etc and the fourth was the interesting part emotion and how we looked at emotion was the thought that creates a physiological impact for example imagine you go to a chow party chow party chow party cho cho party so you go to cho party literally cho party party or potty what party oh cho party okay you go to cho party and there you okay listen to me carefully you are hungry so you go to this guy who has kulfi have you ever had kulfi i want you to imagine kulfi the best kulfi you've had you know the kesar and the pistas and i want you to imagine the smell of the kesar and the pista and the nice kulfi the best you've ever had and then i want you to take some rubri do you know what rubri is of course iit now you take rubri and you put on the kulfi then you take a spoon you take some rubber you take some kulfi and you put it in your mouth and it's so delicious it's just going round and round and it's amazing and it goes down now tell me one thing how many of you felt your mouth was salivating very nice the ones you didn't check your brains <laughs> your mother had dropped you when you were a baby that's my diagnostic but normal people mouth waters so this is how we defined emotion a thought that had a physiological response so you're thinking about kulfi and the physiological response was half of you became like scooby dooby doo you know you were thinking your mouth was watering your stomach was butterflying i don't know what but something physiological response fear does the same physiological response when you you know you <gasps> Oh, anger does the same monument monument you don't does it happen in iit you get angry on yourself or on other professors no still you know the physiological response so that's how we define the emotion so when the intervention was given we try to make sure that the four manipulations happen the four stimulations happen body consciousness breath work intention and emotion the interventions that were provided were provided at two times during the day one was early in the morning one was late at night so basically after getting up and before going to sleep these times we took because we found out that this is the time when the mind is most receptive this was the time when our defense mechanism is a little bit low we are sort of meditative you know we are more suggestible the interventions range from 5 minutes in the morning 5 minutes in the evening to maximum of 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the evening it was progressive we kept on increasing the time and the whole purpose was that it should happen it should not be pushed you know you, you shouldn't push it it should happen like falling in love you want to push it like a smile you want to push it 
So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted it to happen naturally, beautifully, lovingly. And once we got the data, this is what I want you to see. These were the results. There was an 82% reduction in insomnia and there was a normalization of sleep patterns, 82%. So what this meant was that meditation works better than booze in every single way. And the best part was that we could experience a deep relaxation based sleep, a sleep that was helping our minds recover, our biology recover because the point is not to be numb, the point is to be relaxed. Again, draw a difference in your mind, one is numbing, one is being relaxed. Relaxing heals you, numbing just procrastinates the onset of the problem. So 82% there was a reduction in severe insomnia, 72% reduction in depression symptoms and again moderate to severe, 75% decrease in generalized anxiety which is quite good. But the best thing personally for me was a 77% improvement in quality of life and again these are based on the parameters of standardized testing and I would want you to think that this was 2020. This was during the peak of the COVID lockdowns and this data is extremely relevant for us because a lot of the times when I'm working with the youth or I'm working with people either in the military or people at tech companies, there is always this thought that external factors will influence my happiness quotient. That if I have this, then I'll be happy. If I have that, I'll be happy. But this showed that our mind is so very important in influencing us. And this was like in Eureka movement because long ago I had done a lot of work on phobias. And working with people who had phobias is so interesting because so many of the fears are logically unjustifiable. A boy will come to me and say, I'm afraid of sharks. And that's why I don't go in a swimming pool. A lady will come to me and say, I'm afraid of cockroaches. And I mean crippling fear. The kind of fear that makes you scream and faint. And then I look at the lady and I look at the cockroach. <laughs> All she needs to do is just sit on it. <laughs> That's it, problem solved. The cockroach doesn't have any venom, it has nothing. No teeth, like logically. You're logical people for God's sake. How do you justify being afraid of cockroaches? Oh, it'll come in my ear, lay eggs, and from my nose they'll come out. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. But a person suffering from a phobia is a mental thing. There's no logic in it. There is the limbic system that's working. It's like a software overdrive. It's like your mind and then there's like this AI working inside. That is giving you how the world is. And it's quite interesting. Because if our mind can, can create these illogical fears, then what we saw was people who started to practice meditative modalities, they started to have a much more positive and resilient attitude towards life. Now resilience is basically how I would like to define it as is what I learned from this gentleman I was working in the Wounded Warrior Project. Wounded Warrior Project is a project from the United States military where a, a warrior that has gone through a traumatic incident where parts of his bodies have been amputated and resilience for those soldiers are extremely important. So that soldier who had half of his face blown off and half of his, uh, like one eye was glass, now just imagine half, no face, half face. And that gentleman, very happy, mind you, 
is explaining to me what resilience meant to him. And he was showing to me that, see, Ishan, resilience is you, you go, you go. This is your life, you're born, and you're, you're growing, you're being happy, you're doing everything right, and things are happening, and your life trajectory is supposed to be like that. You put in the hard work, and the quality of life goes up. You get joy, you get happiness, you get health, what not. You know, that's normal life trajectory. But some people suffer through trauma. Some people suffer through traumatic life incidences. It could be disease, it could be death, it could be something that happens in their life. And doesn't mean trauma needs to be extreme. Again, I told you when it comes to fear, everybody's definition of trauma is different. Everybody's definition and interpretation of personal battles is different. Somebody could be suffering from body dysmorphia. Somebody could be suffering from extreme trauma. Somebody could be suffering from hair loss. Just saying, you know, things can happen. And when something like that happens, the quality of life goes down. Boom. Now, resilience is how long it takes for you to go back to that trajectory from where you fell. So that gentleman was trying to tell me that it's very, very important, students or military or healthcare professionals, just like they have a science training, mathematics training, coding training, they should also be introduced to resilience training. And resilience training, especially when non-pharmaceutical tools or meditative tools are provided, that when a person falls, then with those tools, it can help them go back. Because a lot of factors influence your resilience. What kind of a bringing you have? What kind of a family you have? What kind of friends you have? Natural predisposition. Some people are walking, talking gendas. Abba, abba, rhinosaurus. Unko farag nahi badta. Kuch bhi bol do. Oh, hai, 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 karke nikal jayenge. So if you are not blessed to be a walking, talking genda, then you need resilience training. And resilience training is you have access to those tools that can help you to do two things. Number one, aware, make you aware that something is off. Make you predict what you are walking into. And number two, make you prepared. Awareness and preparedness is something that can really help you bring resilience and good mental health in your life. And again, these tools are not for acute relief. These tools are part of an integrative holistic approach towards mental health. If somebody is suffering from severe anxiety or severe depression or severe mental health issues, then of course they would need a pharmaceutical approach towards mental health. But when we are talking about chronic behavioral health care, that is the time when the acute intervention has already been given and now we are talking about a life after. We are talking about behavioral rehabilitation, we are talking about preventative promotive health care. That is where these tools work best. Second, if already there is no such acute problem, but there is an understanding that the occupation or industry that you have chosen is a high stress industry, then these tools as a precautionary measure work phenomenally. Because you have to take into account occupational safety standards and hazards. Your occupation, your field of study, statistically, is one of the most stressful, burnout inducing, depressive fields. Congratulations. Yay. So we have to take preventative precautionary measures, yes or no? That is where these tools will shine. They will really, really help you. We have to take care of our cognitive health. We have to take care of our cardiovascular health. But most importantly, we have to make sure we become more and more resilient. Resilience will help us in our life. I work with a lot of people who have access to such tools and they are very resilient. They are very positive. 
And again, it is an acquired skill. It is a skill that we trained them in. They weren't like that. It was a training that was provided. I was just working with a gentleman, a very interesting case I'd like to share with you. This gentleman from Goa was driving and he fell asleep. Now when this jackass, uh, gentleman, <laughs> professor, sorry, my mistake. When this gentleman fell asleep, he totaled the car. He came out and he came to meet me and he said, I'm so happy, bro. I said, what happened? He said, I totaled my car. I said, are you fine? He said, yeah, I'm fine, but I'm so happy. I said, what happened? He said, I wanted to sell it. Somebody offered me 17 lakhs, but the insurance offered me 25. I'm so happy. And I'm looking at that guy. My God, but, but good example of resilience, bad example for life. And then I'm working with university students that are depressed because they saw an accident on the road. Didn't even go through it. Or best one in TikTok. They saw something on TikTok that affected them. Now this shows that resilience is a factor and parameter that we should think about once we are building up our resume. Because things will go up and down and we will need awareness and preparedness for when that happens. Do you agree? Yes or no? Thank you so very much. And now, that being said, so yeah, and then the research continued, and then why this is so amazing, and blah di da, and testimonials from doctors, etc., etc. But I won't bore you more with facts. Let us get into some practicals. Can we? Shall we? I only have 10 minutes with you. Say yes. yes. Do sit straight. Now the modality that I want to share with you is a very simple modality and it takes into account the four parameters I talked about, body consciousness, intention, breath work and emotion. We will first start with emotional settings, okay. So in emotional settings, I don't know where you stand when it comes to theology, frankly it doesn't matter. What I want you to do is take your awareness to the sun, can you do that, can you do that, yes. sun. And I want you to think about the sun when you were in kindergarten. And you used to draw the sun with smiley face. The sun is good and the sun is nice and the sun gives life. Can you do that? Can you project good thoughts on the sun and that the sun is power and the sun is great and the sun is awesome. Now, we will set the intention. This was setting the emotion. Now, setting the intention is... When you will inhale, I am going to give you a four count of inhalation and a four count of exhalation. Yeah? So four count inhalation is, I am going to say one, two, three, four, and you inhale. And then I say four, three, two, one, and you exhale. This is called a counted breath. A counted breath is extremely important if we are talking about our heart rate. It helps us calm our brain waves. It helps us take our endocrinology in our hands and it affects our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So when I say one, two, three, four, you inhale as much as you can. So. And then I say four, three, two, one, and you exhale as deeply as you can. Let's try. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Exhale. Four, three, two, one. Relax. Look at me. Big breath. Effortful breathing, counted breath. We want to affect our sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. You can't do that if you look like a dead man. Let's try. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Release. Four, three, two, one. Great. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Chill. Excellent. Now we add the next two steps. The first is the count, the body consciousness. This is your hand. Give me your hand. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. This is a great exercise, especially when we are talking about somebody who's rehabbing from brain injury. Take both the hands. One, two, three.
थ्री फोर फोर थ्री टू वन ट्राई टू प्रेस मच्छर कॉकरोच वन टू थ्री फोर फोर थ्री टू वन वन टू थ्री फोर फोर थ्री टू वन चिल सो नाउ वेन आई एल बी सेंग टू यू वन टू थ्री फोर यू विल बी अवेयर ऑफ मूविंग योर हैंड्स लाइक दिस बोथ द हैंड्स टू यू विल बी ब्रीदिंग इन ब्रीदिंग आउट थ्री यू हैव सेट द इंटेंशन दैट सन इज अ गुड थिंग एंड नाउ फोर यू विल क्रिएट सेलेक्टिव अवेयरनेस सेट द इंटेंशन दैट वेन यू इन हेल द लाइट ऑफ द सन इज कमिंग इन थ्रू द हेड down to the heart down to the navel down to the base of the spine and then as you exhale you are pushing the light back to the sun this is a thought exercise that really helps calm the mind so when i say one awareness always to the head try to touch your head body consciousness head 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 two heart 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 head important because you know brain heart important because you know valentine day <laughs> two navel 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 important because a lot of our emotions feelings you know we feel it in the tummy ooh so navel 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 four base of the spine the coccyx region coccyx region is that part of the butt that you know when a cycle wala bhaiya goes down you see that's the coccyx region so four is going to be that but not good one sir okay <laughs> four coccyx region so when you are inhaling set the intention that the light from the sun is coming to the head down to the heart and you can imagine you can visualize we want to give direction to the brain we want to give selective awareness and that's important because when you will be thinking anxiety or imagine stress or perceive stress or you know whatever 20000 things you need to bring the situation in control this can really help you head heart navel spine inhale and then exhale back to the sun as if the sun is the ocean and your breath is the wave okay so four things we are going to do number 1 our fingers number 2 our breath number 3 become aware of the sun and number 4 set the intention that when you are inhaling the light of the sun coming down going up let's try that close your eyes amazing try to close your eyes closing eyes is important when somebody's eyes are closed they are more receptive that's why when you eat something delicious your eyes are closed you hug somebody your eyes are closed we tried teach people meditation with eyes open doesn't work try closing your eyes non judgmental awareness to your thoughts just observe don't react awareness to the palms of your hands be aware of the four parameters i discussed then awareness to the sun within the sun set the intention lies all the strength and power that you need today right now as a student you are always aware that you need the courage you need the strength you need the power imagine as if the sun has that what you need all the power and strength to allow the seed of success to flourish within you and when you visualize the light as you breathe i leave it to you you can visualize it as electricity or a fire or liquid gold i don't know go nuts imagine what you want to and let's try inhale 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 
and as you exhale, make it go up from the spine to the navel to the heart to the head back to the sun. When you are inhaling, feel as if you are filling yourself with power. When you are exhaling, feel you are emptying yourself. You are like Princess Elsa from Frozen. You are letting go. Set the intention. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Deep. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Deep. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Relax. Let your hands be in a relaxed position. You don't need to you know, put them on your thighs or whatnot. And now we'll do it in three variations fast, medium, slow. Objective is to raise the heart rate and then to drop it. The further we drop your heart rate, the more relaxed you'll feel. Let's try. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Go. One. Two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, 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 two. Three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, slow, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four. Three, two, one. Relax. Always try to end with gratitude. A simple gratitude to the sun, to the nature, to all the wonderful things in my life. Try to find something nice in your life. And you can't be grateful if you're not smiling. Try to smile with your eyes closed. Try to be grateful. And slowly open your eyes. Excellent. Feeling better? Good. Say yes. yes. Wonderful. Now what you can do is, you can utilize this technique as two forms. One is as a heavy technique, meaning in the night time before you are going to sleep, take out five minutes, set the timer and be aware of these four parameters and do this. And second is as a light technique. And the light technique is you are in class and you are feeling like, you know, boom. Keep your intention in your hand. Focus and inhale. One, two, three, four, four. Three, two, one. So in your mind, the technique is happening, the four parameters is there, the intention, the emotion, the breath, the awareness, and your hands is moving. So you're shifting your attention from the stressor to the relaxer. You can try to do that when you have free time as a light technique, maybe when you are in transit, maybe when you are uh, walking from one classroom to another, you can use it as a transitory exercise to set your mind in a much more receptive and happier mode. And if you do this, I'm sure you will benefit. 
This is one of such modalities. I hope to one day come and teach you much more of these modalities and if one day we can create actual resilience training for brilliant students like yourself where you have access to a plethora of SOPs for your mental health. That would be amazing. But till that time, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. So thank you so very much. You have been an amazing audience. You can clap for yourself. Before you clap for me, I still have five minutes. If there are any questions at all, I'll try to answer them in the best possible manner, as fast as I can, and then you can clap for me. Yes, please, over to you. I have a question. Yes, sir. How do you coordinate this? Uh, that is practice. practice. Through practice, sir. That is the whole point. We want to practice, we want to get better at it, and we want it to go into our intracellular memory. We want to correlate it with gratitude, with positive thought, with relaxation. It's like creating a painting. In the beginning, it's tough. But as you continue, as you persevere, it goes into intracellular memory, it gets better. And that's why I said the four parameters. The most important parameter is that thought, that intention that, okay, you know, this light is there, it's coming down. But more importantly, what you'll see is we have combined the visualization with the body consciousness. And it's an old modality. There's nothing new with what I'm telling you. It's, it's a part of native medicine. So you're bringing the awareness down and then you're making it go up. So in a way, you are sort of giving direction to your mind that sort of goes everywhere. And over time, you'll have much better control. It's like when you're doing push-ups. If today I ask you to do 100, how will you coordinate? It'll be tough, yeah? Yeah? Yes, no? Yes. Or overconfident, my people. <laughs> It'll be tough. But slowly, 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 you build upon it, build upon it. That's why I said five minutes. And then it becomes just a part of who you are. I know so many people, you know, and then it becomes like the go to. Because the mind is so beautiful that it needs SOP, especially when I'm working with soldiers. They are trained in such a manner that they can do whatever they need to when the time comes, you know. Then it's not, you're not doing it, it's happening. You're not doing it, it's happening. So automatically you will find if you practice, practice, practice and, and a stressful situation comes and something is happening, so immediately you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. You're not even thinking about it and your awareness is going to your breath, your awareness is going to your your intention, your emotion, your body is listening to you and that is the state that we want to achieve through resilience training. See, okay? Thank you. It was a wonderful talk and uh, my name is Arpita, I'm a professor in civil engineering. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when I joined the institute, you know, we had to visit the hospital several times and the institute tests all possible bodily fluids to find out if we are fit physically for this job. Now, uh, my question to you is because you have used, you, you have worked with all these data on, you know, quality of sleep, quality of life, are there tests divisible to check a person's mental health when somebody is coming because this is a relation this is a profession which requires working relationships between people especially when we are guiding phd students it's it's not just prof it cannot be only professional because we are working on a one to one relationship with these people so are there divisible tests to check parameters related to our mental health then the bodily fluids should not also be taken, right? My objective is preventative and promotive medicine, ma'am. It is not predictive medicine. Because when we get into predictive medicine, then it's an ethical question. So, as a, I'm not a philosophy major, so I, I would refrain from this. What I would recommend is that if we have Promotive modalities, that even if a person 
gets such things because there are of course there are <coughs> parameters for standardized testing if you go to a uh, uh, the military does it all the time uh, critical infrastructure jobs does it all the time but uh, I won't recommend it for students because I was a student once and mera to hari samay bulb phata rehta tha. I'm talking about for professors. But, but still I would recommend, recommend if we have preventative and promotive modalities. That means ki hai bhi agar to phir karna kya hai. Kyunki agar maan lo parameter mein aa bhi gaya ki mere ko anxiety bhoj jada hai. To phir kya? Ya to pharmaceutical de ya non-pharma de. एंड मेरे हिसाब से जो नॉन फार्मा है वो आसानी से इंटीग्रेट हो सकती है अगर हम सॉफ्टवेयर बेस्ड एल बना दें ताकि लोगों को एक्सेस हो और अगर ये होगा देन प्रिवेंशन इज़ बेटर देन क्योर बट डेफिनेटली कमिंग टू योर क्वेश्चन देर आर देर आर स्टैंडर्डाइज टेस्टिंग आई एम श्योर निम हैंड्स हैज इट्स ओन स्टैंडर्डाइज टेस्टिंग फॉर साउथ एशियन पॉपुलेशन बट यस मैम थैंक यू मैडम यस यस सर Hello, sir. Firstly, it was an interesting talk. My question is uh, related to the point the resilience or uh, resilience training that you talked about. So I was wondering whether there is a point that might come where one has to intensify. For example, the technique that we just did. If somebody is doing for it for five minutes and doing it repeatedly for many days or maybe months, the point may come that the training this has no more effect on our. The previous That's why that's, that's, that's why it has to be a progressive protocol based SOP. So this is just an, you gave me one hour. <laughs> okay, so for just for this technique, if you can tell, Achy. how much you so like usually how much is the session and what is the duration? Just five minutes doing it every day for how long it will last? Then one then has to intensify it. <laughs> शेल्फ लाइफ तो मैडम मैंने कभी ट्राई की नहीं पता नहीं आप बताना जी बट बट अगेन यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट एंड दैट डज हैपन इट हैज टू बी अ प्रोग्रेसिव प्रोटोकॉल एंड वी डिड वर्क अपॉन इट एंड योर क्वेश्चन इज थोरली रेलेवेंट आवर माइंड गेट्स इम्यून सो वी हैव टू इधर इंटेंसिफाई द टाइम वी हैव टू इंटेंसिफाई द मोडालिटी एंड दैट्स वाई यू नो इन द नाइन मंथ्स वी यूज टू Technically speaking, after every seven days, we would change the module. That gave us the best results. So, seven days to big are you? After that, I don't know. After that, I don't know. Okay. 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 my future i continuously think about okay what will happen next what is what is my future where i am going to be in next 10 years what will i do i can i can't find stability what do i do to this to, to find stability <laughs> you you asked four questions number one you said goal setting number two you said anxiety number three you said fomo fear of missing out and number four unstable क्या जवाब चाहिए आपको मैं तो बुद्ध बैठा हूँ यहाँ पे है ना जिंदगी का मतलब है साफ कोशिश करो मेहनत करो धीरे धीरे ही होगा बट हाँ एक दिन में तो कुछ नहीं होगा टैकल अगर करनी है सिचुएशन आपको एक 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 करके लो सबसे पहले तो आप अपनी फिजियोलॉजिकल सिम्टम्स लो एंगजाइटी के कि अगर आपको ये होता है और आप खुद ही गिर पड़ जाते हो Uh, we did this specially with the uh, athletes we tried to research and our objective was injury prevention during training because athletes who would think a lot they would overthink things and they would end up getting injured now once you get injured during practice that has a massive impact on the team who has paid a lot of money for you and that is what you are describing with yourself that you are about to perform you are about to do some things but you know hath pair pada diya aapne तो धीरे धीरे आप फोकस करना शुरू कीजिए सबसे पहले तो बात करते हैं फिजियोलॉजिकल टेक्निक्स लाइक दिस दैट विल हेल्प यू टेक केयर ऑफ द फिजियोलॉजी सेकंड व्हाट यू टॉक्ड अबाउट गोल मैनिफेस्टेशन और आई रिकमेंड टू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स इज स्टार्ट जर्नलिंग एवरी सिंगल इवनिंग राइट अ जर्नल एंड इन दैट राइट 
exactly, you know, try to meditate. What do you want in life? What is your goal? What do you want to achieve? What's your vision? What's the problem you want to solve? What's the solution that you are seeking? This is Apnega unstability. What we've seen really helps when a person is becoming unstable is groups. You know, uh, have a very nice motivated group around you. And there is a lot of problem solving that's happening. And I'm, when I say a group, I don't mean picture dekhne jana or something like that. I mean a group that's motivated in a common cause, a common passion. Because end of the day, we are, we are social beings, you know. We are social beings, we get inspired. And you'll see that. You'll see that uh, in Silicon Valley, you'll see that in finance sectors, you'll see that with inventors, entrepreneurs, that they have these groups. So I'm sure there are various groups here in, in your alumni that you can join, where you can discuss, when you can you know, give sort of stability to your mind based on problem solving and passion building. And then Chauthi Chis Kya Thi Me Bhool Liya Saab. FOMO. Kya Me Bhool Gai Thi. Chalo, Teen Me Satti Batti Karte. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. हाँ जी आखरी सवाल कोई है पूछ लीजिए साहब हाँ जी साहब गुड इवनिंग दिस इज डॉक्टर जवाहर नमस्कार नमस्कार वी स्टार्टेड अबाउट यू नो मैनेजिंग मेंटल हेल्थ इन इंडिया सो इफ यू पुट इलेवरेट समथिंग एंड एस वी हैव वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बैच हियर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू कैन टेक अप यू नो इफ यू कैन गाइड I can make a course for you guys that only has practical follow up steps that you can do. Just a un saap ne kaha, to agar adesh aata hai aap logo se, I can make that course that can be done, and I think that would be phenomenal. What do you think? Do you think that will be useful to all of you? So please reach out to your professor and. Uh, Request a course, I can design something, we can get it on your LMS. Do you have an LMS? Learning management system, do you have something like that? Excellent. So maybe we can put something like that and not, you don't need a lot. That's the thing, that's what we found out with our research. It's not keep her saat din mein hume change karna aur eternity tak change hoga. Agar aapko long term impact bhi chahiye, something like 240 minutes in a month is quite good to bring qualitative health in your life. So I would love to build something like that based upon my research for all of you. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Nick. First so let's uh, thank the speaker. <laughs> what a wonderful talk. And uh, he is interested in uh, these techniques being used at IIT Bombay. He also has plans to set up some scholarships. So there are lots of amazing things he has. So let's thank once again. So on behalf of IIT, we would like to give a small memento. IIT means uh, you know books and all that. So <laughs> this is a coffee table book about IIT Bombay. This is beautiful, I love it. <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> so, there's not much to say in word of thanks, I just have to say thank you, everybody. And uh, thanks to, uh, I would like to uh, recall uh, Wheels Global, uh, which is a Washington DC based organization. Uh, that's the one uh, that recommended uh, Ishanji to us. In fact, we have Dr. Bindu, uh, Bindu Kumar Kanswadia, and who uh, is the director, uh, health division, um, mental health division in the Health Council in Wheels. 
which is uh, uh, not uh, not profit organizations water health environment education lifestyle sustenance so that's a non profit and uh, dr bindu kumar uh, is there um, and he recommended that we should uh, he is the one who connected us with uh, ishan ji um, the other uh, project is spoken tutorial and uh, i'm the pa of the project uh, we are happy to uh, happy that we could uh, get dr uh, ishan ji here and um, that he could be with us i also want to thank our um, dean acr office that made a uh, lot of effort to announce sorry we had to change a few things the previous uh, venue was not okay and all that and also the time we had to change uh, that's because the uh, ishan ji had has to be um, so i want to thank everybody especially the people who traveled from outside to be with us and of course by it Again, without Professor Kanji, this would not have happened. So, on behalf of Ishanji Wills Global Foundation, I really want to express my sincere gratitude to eminent Professor Kanji, who has worked effortlessly to make this happen. And uh, just want to make one correction: I am the one of the healthcare council director, but he is a mental health director. and his whole motive is to bring happiness to all the students and the faculty member of the world so heads up to him i'm going to talk with object in his clinical research so i'm proud to be part of his research thank you very much again thank you sir very much